What's going on guys, Liam here and it's time to wrap up round 22 of the 2023 NRL season and god damn, what a crazy round. We're getting close man, we're getting close, only a few more rounds to go and it's going to be finals footy, how good, I absolutely love this time of year, every game counts, oh so so good, the only thing that's better is the actual finals itself, so so in this video guys we'll go over the games quickly uh, individually we'll have a look at the ladder and we'll have a look at each game in a little bit more depth and then we'll have a look at the games next week and um we'll start start writing off some teams start talking about some teams and you know where they could possibly finish you know like with the uh you know are they done are they going to squeeze into the four how it's all going to go so man what a shake up that last game too <sighs> crazy all right, so let's go. So Broncos defeat the Roosters. West Tigers go down to the Rabbitohs. Storm pump the Eels. Uh, Newcastle Knights defeat the Raiders. Seagulls beat the Dragons. <sighs> Man, Penrith shut out the Sharkies. Uh, Bulldogs <laughs> scrape home against the Dolphins. And look at that, the Titans. The Titans beat the Cowboys. Wow, absolutely craziness. Now... If you watch my pre-video, I said either I said either this game, this game, or this game would be an upset. I picked this game, and um, which I was wrong. But uh, yeah, I was, guess I was sort of right. And um, yeah, the the Cowboys go down to the Titans without Tino Brimson went down early too. So um, absolutely crazy. But like I said, guys, we'll have a quick look at the ladder now. I, I mean, I, I kept here Cowboys, Broncos, like, we're not going to lose again. We're going to finish top four because got every game is hard, guys. There's no easy wins in the NRL. That's what makes the NRL so good. And, I mean, I, I had Cowboys finishing in the top eight, if you saw my the prediction video, but there was no certainty, man. And I, I definitely thought they were going to drop a game or two. And um, it doesn't matter if you do. You can still make the eight because, look, I'm... Like I said, there's, I'm pretty sure every team in the top eight, or Parramatta were in the top eight, will will say from here to 11th, it's going to drop games as well. So it doesn't mean you're, you're out of the eight by any means necessary. But um, yeah, it's like I said, there's there's two teams that are looking amazing. And the rest, well, I guess I can chuck the Warriors in there. Why the hell not? And the rest definitely can drop some games. So absolutely wild, man. And this is why we love NRL for real, man. So Panthers, Broncos still out on top. Wars up in third there. Storm in fourth. Raiders. Poor old Raiders. Um, we've got sitting in fifth still. Bunny shoot up to sixth. God damn, how a week can change, eh? God damn. They're not. They just go straight up here in one win. Oh, what a difference the trail makes. Uh, Sharkies free falling. And uh, Cowboys down to eighth. And um, Knights looking the good. Seagulls looking the goods. And Parramatta, the big losers. From seventh down to 11th. And they could be toast, man. I mean, the one good thing is they've got the night, uh, the Dragons this weekend. Dylan Brown's back, getting closer to getting RCG and all that back as well. But Jesus Christ, I, I'm so close to writing them off. It's not funny. It's um, just key key players at key times. I mean, it's just. I mean, they had injuries and suspensions at the start of the year and the end of the year. In the middle, they were healthy. It was when they had lost origin players, it was just the worst. Sometimes it's just not your year, man. Uh, I actually think they've been playing pretty good footy. But, you know, when you have injuries at the start, injuries at the end, and you have state of origin in the middle, and you have state of origin players in your team, it just happens sometimes. So, looking dicey, absolutely dicey for Parramatta. Still got Broncos to go, still have Penrith to go. And um, Cowboys too, I mean... I'll say everyone's saying Cowboys gonna win the comp. Cowboys, I'm like with it, with no disrespect to the Cowboys, and I actually I think they're playing like a top four team for real. I think they're I don't think there's more than five teams better than the Cowboys this present time, even with that loss. But guys, you're gonna drop games. It's gonna happen, and like there's no certainty. Lock all these in, and now Broncos next week. That's this is tough. Like Broncos. Cowboys could legitimately be back in 11th next week. I mean, Knights have the Dolphins, very winnable. Seagulls have Roosters, very winnable. And then we have the Parramatta Eels have the Dragons, very winnable. So, the, like I said, Cowboys could all of a sudden be back in 11th spot. It's it's just that crazy. And that's what I said to my mate who's a big Cowboys. I'm like, before, I said, what's the older saying in the book? 
don't count them chickens, man. Don't count them chickens. You gotta, you gotta make the eight before you can win the grand final, bro. And um, I genuinely still think they will, but it's no certainty, man. Like there's, 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 um, there's, um, they gotta, you know, they still got Panthers to play. They still got Sharkies to play. They got a buy, which is good. So, I still think they should make the eight because they're playing like a top four team, but. Jesus Christ, and, and the other big thing is not just for Cowboys, just for any of these teams, you really don't want to be finished seventh or eighth because playing all away games, um, four, winning four away games against top eight teams is extremely hard. I mean, Cowboys, look at that. They've got a three and seven record away from home um, sort of thing, so it's, it's, it's very tough to do that sort of thing. So, um, you know, Cowboys with a great home record, if they could have stitched up some home finals, it obviously would have been much more of a threat. But we'll have to wait and see, guys. Like I said, how week changes. All of a sudden, <laughs> Bunnies are up in sixth. You <laughs> know, Paris in 11th. Cowboys were down here a few weeks ago. All of a sudden, they're up here. What do you do? And that's what you've got to look at as a positive as a Cowboys supporter. Not that long ago, you were literally here. So if you said, you know, seven weeks ago, you're going to be in eighth spot... <laughs> They'll take that any day of the week. So it's not all negative. Got to look at the positives. Um, just keep getting those wins, baby. Keep winning games. You're good. Broncos Roosters. All right, this is a bit of a funny game. I actually thought the Roosters came out and played some real good footy. And Broncos were brilliant. And there's been a lot of chat during the week. Are Broncos legit? Can they win the comp? Can they win the comp? And i had been holding off my judgment. Of course, they can win the comp. It. You know, but will they win the comp, or are they a genuine threat to win the comp? I wasn't quite sold yet. At half time, I was ready to say, yeah, they, they can win the comp. They're going to do this. Then they had a bit of a lacklustre second half, and it wasn't poor by any means, but I was just sort of sitting there going, oh, I want to see, a, and we'll get to Penrith in a minute, and what, you know why I hold them as the standard. You know, it was just, there was just a few things where I could just... Find little negatives in there, right? And again, they're not bad. It's not saying they're a bad team. They're brilliant. And like I said, if they finish in the top two, they are a genuine contender. But sitting here saying, you know, they're the favourites or they're the team to beat, you know, I haven't quite seen that yet. Now, there's a, a couple of things. We'll have a look at the team lists. Um, you know, like I, I thought this. I thought Marino was brilliant. Ezra Mann, great. Selwyn Cobble was a little quiet. I thought Fleggs was great. Payne Haas was brilliant. And, oh, we hit Paddy Carrigan as well. So anyone that followed my uh, TikTok, I did TikTok live before this game, and um, I saw Paddy Carrigan got put in the second row, and boom, we hit. And um, thank God he did, because I had a stinker of a round when it came to footy. I, I, I tipped putridly, and I apologise if you followed my punts. I always say never just follow my punts blindly, guys. Do your own research. I was due for a stinker, but actually, as far as the head-to-heads go, I was pretty bad as well. So I had Roosters to win this. I didn't actually think they were going to win it. I just knew one of these games was being upset. But I, I, at the end of the day, I picked them, so I was wrong. We got the Bunnies right. We got the Storm right. We got the Knights wrong. We got the Seagulls right. We got the Panthers right. I think we had Dolphins here. And then we got this one wrong as well. So a bit of a stinker for me, man. I'm not going to roar. But that, that happens. That happens, man. Now, um... Thoroughly impressed with Smoothie. I thought he was great. This is Xavier Wilson, guys. Great. Kobe Hebberton seems to have gone to a new level. He's been brilliant. Uh, really, really impressed. Um, now, I'm super impressed. Positive, 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 positive. But just, you know what I mean? I have to throw the critiques in there as well. And the cool thing is, these are both fixable. <coughs> it's nothing, to do, nothing that can't be fixed. One is, if you, just in the first half, Broncos were, they, they were on top. But they weren't, I mean, I don't know what the score was at halftime. It wasn't 20 nil at this point. It was probably maybe 10 nil or something like that. But Reese Walsh, like, it's just, the thing is, I love this as a spectator, but Reese Walsh just pegging passes over the sideline. Just don't need to score a try every second. And then you win in 20 nil at halftime. You can't really critique it, but I'm just saying, if you're playing a big finals game against the Bunnies or the Penrith Panthers, you do not want to be doing that stuff. Um, so. I'd love to see him be a little more selective that. So if I was a Broncos fan, I'd want to see that. As me, I don't care. Throw him, throw him, roll. She, oh, I love watching it sort of thing. You know, like I, him and Drinkwater are pretty similar. I'm just like, keep throwing them balls, man. I don't care. Do your thing. But as a Bron- if I was a Broncos fan, I'd be like, Reese, just time and place, brother. Time and place. Uh, 
Now, the other thing is, is there's a little bit of a st strategic thing. <sighs> Payne Haas, let's have a look at their player stats and we'll have a look at their meters. And uh, you'll hear what I'm saying in a second. All right, so where's their meters? Where's their meters? All right. Payne Haas uh, dramatically dominates their meter count, especially in the middle. I mean, Kurt Cable had a big game for him. He's actually quite a bit lower than that, Paddy Cone. But he's, he's substantially, I mean, Ezra Mann had a massive line break. That's why this is. But not a huge meter team. Um, they really do rely on Payne for a lot of their go forward, which is fine. I just don't like the way Kevy's playing him. And hear me out. And I'll throw two scenarios at you. I'll throw and, and tell me what you think. And I, I'll tell you what. Now, this game, like, like I said, most of the time this doesn't matter. But I actually watched this. They'll, he did this a bit last year and they got ran down quite a bit. All right. He plays Payne Haas for the first 40 minutes. That's a big ask for a prop. Payne can handle it. It's fine. 80 minutes for a prop is way too much. So obviously you don't want to play in the whole time, right? But I'll just give a little example, right? So I'll give two. This is this is the one just from the weekend. So the Roosters actually were a little bit on top the first 10 minutes, all right? Now, they didn't really get any points. It didn't really matter. Um, they didn't score points till later on. But they, they were sniffing around. They started to win the ruck a little bit. They started to, you know, they were getting quicker play the balls. Now, let's say they do snavel a try. Bang, bang. And all of a sudden, it's 20 to 10. Payne Haas has been on the field for 55 minutes. And now you're pulling off all your go forward. You're pulling off your middle forward that doesn't miss tackles. You're pulling off your middle forward that doesn't give dumb penalties. You get what I'm saying? That could be that's you, you've lost momentum anyway, and then you you do you get what I'm saying? Now another one. Let's let's say they're in the finals. Let's say they're playing Penrith or Melbourne, a team that can just really suffocate you and you know, starve you of ball and you don't make silly mistakes and penalties. Imagine Payne Hart. It's you're 55, 60 minutes into the game. You're down 18 to 10, and, you, and then you pull your Payne Hart off. You get what I'm saying? If Fisher Harris and Moses Leota come on fresh against your bench props, I don't like that at all, man. I do not like that at all. Um, like I said, it happened quite a bit last year. I know a lot of people didn't probably see it, but he just paid play pain for such big minutes because he just like give the bro a rest at the end of the second half and bring him back on. You know he can play 60 minutes. Just give him a break either side of half time or something like that because. It could get found out, and it, the, the thing is, it's not really mattering in these games, but in the finals, you lose one game, you're gone, skis. I mean, you get a second chance first first bet bite, but okay, you get through the thing, now you're playing the Bunnies, Penrith or Melbourne or something in the semi, if you lose, you're gone. You know what I mean? Like, you, just just imagine that for a second, you're down 18 to 10, you know, you're in the game, everything's going great, but Payne Haas is starting to look a little gassed, he's not, make, not having the impact he has. Fisher Harris and Moses Leo to come on fresh after a 40 minute break. Oh. Do you leave Payne House out there, out there exhausted? Do you take him off and then get those guys get smacking through your bench forwards? Yeah, it's, uh, that's a little scary. But like I said, the cool thing is it's fixable. Like I just don't, I just, I don't, I don't like that rotation for me. I just, I, I think it's putting way too much on the kid. And it, you know, don't care how good you are. If you're 74 minutes into a game, in the middle. As a 125 kilo prop, you're probably going to make an error. That's when you make errors. That's when you miss tackles. That's when you leave gaps. That's when you don't get the marker correctly. That's when that sort of stuff happens. So, very fixable. So, like I said, Broncos' two biggest problems for me are super fixable. So, looking good, man. And like I said, team to beat, nah. Super, super dangerous and Penrith should be super worried, nah. Genuine contenders, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Definitely. West Tigers, Rabbits. Man, at half time, yeah, what's it, 20 to 6? I was going, damn, these bunnies, man. And, but I've been saying it, man. I think there's a, I just, I just think there's a rugby league team in here, man. Uh, I really do. I just really, really do. I mean, I had Sean Johnson in this and a hit that, which was good. Um, Latrell looked good in the first half, looked a little underdone, but not too bad at all. Um, I actually really like Chaley Staines' runs, he looked really good. A few bobbles. I mean, Tyre looked good in the centres. Uh, Tyre and Tupo looked good in the centres. Um, Jesus Christ, the line speed of Stefano was great. I mean, Papa, like I said, I, I, I genuinely see... I, I actually thought Sean Bloor was great. I actually think this was Alex Twile's best game I've ever seen him run. He was doing genuine damage to the Bunnies 
um, team. I was sitting there going, oh, like he was beating them with footwork, he was beating them with pace, he was hitting lines, he was, he was just being physical. He was brilliant. I was, I've, I've never rated Twelve. Like I, I'm not, I just, I just haven't. I've just not thought he's a very good rugby league player. I know he became this cult hero because he hadn't scored a try in such a long time. My theory was there's a reason he hasn't scored a try in such a long time, but I just thought he was really good. It was honestly one of the best games I've seen him play. Obviously, Bunny's a little too strong. Cooler Matungi's in big, big trouble. Big, big trouble. He Two shoulder charges. He might be out for a while, man. Not too sure what the charges are, but yeah, that was uh, not good. And it was bizarre. I mean, he got, I've had him in as an anytime try scorer of the week before because I have just I think he's such a good player. And he did nothing last week. He had four or five runs. Zero defensive intensity. He must have been sick or something. Because he was so far. And then this game, he drops Clemmer first shot, drops him again, second hit up. He's running lines. He's scoring tries. I was like, where was this last week, bruh, when I had money on you? Come on, man. Come on, man. But, um, no, actually, just before we get through this game, I actually we missed we miss the uh, we missed the stats, guys. Let's have a real quick look at the stats. Sorry, guys. I'm excited. Um, like I said, Broncos completed brilliantly. Really good. Tail of the year for the Roosters. Completing at 66%. That's not going to get it done. 1,500 metres, not super impressive. Five line breaks, pretty low for Brisbane. But again, I thought the Roosters were playing some pretty good footy and that number there, restricted in Roosters with a team with Joey Manu, with a team with Tupo, Suwali'i, Teddy Tedesco. I mean, that's that's pretty damn impressive from the Broncos. Um, average set distance, pretty damn poor. Pretty damn poor. Like I said, I thought sort of felt like they were losing the battle. I felt everyone other than Payne Haas was getting dominated in the tag, including Paddy. Including Paddy, I thought he got uh, put on his back a few times. Running on an edge, very different. You can get hit from the side, get rolled onto your back a bit easier. He normally runs very direct in and behind the ruck. Um, but yeah, well, let's have a quick... We've just rushed through this one. Um, tackle efficiency, not horrendous, not great, just good. Missed tackles, 20. That'll get it done. 44 to the Roosters, terrible. Um, negative errors, 11. Obviously, they'd want to get this down. I think Reese Walsh had about four of them. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter when the Roosters do 11. Damn. And penalties conceded 8-7. to seven. All right, so let's go. So we'll get back to this one. Sorry, guys. Um, but, yeah, like I said, uh, I, I am blown away that the Tigers let Laurie go. He, he, what a pickup for the, for the Panthers. He's brilliant. He's so damn good. I really, really enjoy watching him play. Um, Trell Mitchell was back. He, was, he looked great. Uh, Johnson, what well, he got a hat trick? One, two, three. Yep. God damn it, dude can't stop scoring tries. Completion rate eighty percent. That'll get it done. Um, a lot of people were saying Bunny's a like you know that wasn't very impressive. I, I, again, I just want to give the Tigers a bit of rap. I don't think they were that bad. They weren't great in the first half, bit clunky. But I, I, I thought they really showed up and put and played. I thought it was more Tigers were good, and then Bunnies were bad, um, sort of thing. Line breaks pretty even, seven to six. Um, post contact, Bunny's got it done there. Um, and look, the Tigers every damn week. Like I keep saying, they're winning the ruck. They're getting these lightning fast play the balls. They're bloody. I've barely seen a game this year where they've lost the ruck like that. Like they they've just and they're doing this against a pretty good Bunnies team, man. That's a substantial difference when you're almost playing the ball a second faster than the, your the other team. Uh, that's great. Ten offloads to nine. Yeah, uh, what else we got here? Tackle efficiency, 88, and yeah, Bunnies obviously have to tidy that up. But yeah, look, 33 missed tackles to 38. So yeah, like I said, Bunny, like I'm not going to crap on the on the West Tigers anymore. I, I I saw effort. I saw a, a foot. I saw a shell of a good footy team in there. So not not a top eight team, but a team that can be, you know, like in the Knights position. You know what I mean? Like fighting for the eight. I can I can see that. I can see that sort of team in them if they get their stuff together for next year. Storm Eels. Yeah, I think Parra are cooked. Um, again, I, I mentioned it before. I'm not making excuses for them. This just happens sometimes. It really does. And it was just—it was one of those ones where they had players suspended and injured at the start of the year. They've had got players suspended and injured now. Two really important times. And in the middle, when we've got State of Origin, they had players out for State of Origin, and they had no buyers helping them out during that time either. It's just one of those ones. I actually think they're playing okay footy. Like, and to put that in perspective, they've now this is their second game they've lost by thirteen plus. Before this week, they'd only lost one game by thirteen plus, which was the best in the comp, maybe equal with Penrith. Um, so I, I generally think they've been playing all right footy. I'm not going to crap on them either. Um, 
yeah, I just think it's just one of those years, man. I mean, Sean Lane, what shatters his... Sh- um, just like... Parramatta season's like Sean Lane's, um, Pat, Sean Lane's year. Shattered jaw, first five rounds, comes back, and then dislocates his elbow out of its thing. It's just absolutely horrendous. Or no, was it... No, he had three, didn't he? He had a shattered jaw, came back from that, had it... Was it hamstring or something? Came back from that, and then, anyway, just a ridiculous run of injury for this year. Um, for him, not for... Parramatta had injuries, but not, like, riddled. It was just more key injuries at key times, uh, sort of thing. But, like I said, it happens. Um, I didn't think Melbourne looked... I mean, they did. They looked great. I'm not going to... They, they they were pretty damn good. Look, the, the last time you want to play Melbourne is after a loss. They just they very rarely lose two in a row. Thought Seve was brilliant. Warbrick was carrying hard. Coates a little quiet. Munster was trying his ass off. Wasn't a typical Munster performance, but then he just skips through that line and scores that goosey try. He's so good. Hughes, probably one of the best games I've seen him play, and um, I thought they handled their bench rotations heaps better this time. And Jesus Christ, Katoa. I heard a lot of raps about this kid, and I saw your first couple games at the start of the year, and I was like, He's all right. I don't know, I don't know if he's worth his height, but he, yeah, he can play rugby league, bro. Uh, they should ask you. Like I said, he's just not quite NRL standard yet. He's damn close, but I see a lot in Parramatta. That is, you know, I see a lot of positives here. Um, yeah, just just like I said, just not quite their year. It's just. I mean, they'll get Dylan Brown next week, and we'll see if they can make a run. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be very very tough. Um. But the way the season's gone, I mean, and with with obviously Cowboys losing that game, I mean, Sharks are free falling. You know, Cowboys lose this Broncos game all of a sudden, and Parramatta win against the Dragons all of a sudden. They're back close to the eight, so you never know, man. It's just, and then you know what? What is it? Sevo back the week after or whatever, and then so you know you don't know. I wouldn't. I'm not writing them completely off because you know, that's that's a terrible thing to do against Parramatta because they're bloody good at proving you're wrong. But um, yeah, it's it's not looking good. Uh, but yeah, completion rates down. Um, run meters. I mean, when they were just destroying teams, they were outrunning teams by five hundred meters. And RCG is. I honestly think RCG is one of the. I know this is hard. How can you say he's underrated when he's played Origin? But I don't think he ever really gets the credit. I think Junior Paulo gets it, and I, he's never mentioned in a top prop conversation. I, I genuinely think he. Well, you can see it, obviously. Like they. <laughs> They go forward substantially better. And the person that takes the run after RCG makes a lot of metres as well because he hits the line quick, jumps up, plays the ball quickly. Um, not all the time, obviously, but he, he does quite often get a quick play the ball. Um, but, yeah, um, absolutely dominated through the middle. Imagine if Nelson was there. Jesus Christ. Uh, line breaks 11 to 6. Um, tackle breaks 45 to 25. Average set distance. Like I said, Parramatta haven't been losing these all year by that. Um, been winning them mostly and then completely dominating the ruck speed as well. So uh, 14 offloads each. Absolutely crazy. Melbourne aren't an offloading team and they match the top offloading team in the comp. God damn. Um, not perfect. From, from Melbourne, they would obviously want to get that a little higher. 25 missed tackles, I mean, definitely not horrendous. Um, obviously had more ball, I guess, than defending. Um, 45 for power, not good enough, not good enough. And then errors, you'd be happy with that. Six, how good, how good. Um, but yeah, like I said, Storm looking the goods. Who they got next week, Penrith. <laughs> how good is that going to be? Jesus Christ. That's going to be ridiculous. Holy damn. That'd be just about game of the round, right? We've got two crackers. We've got Penrith, Storm, Broncos, Cowboys. Wow. Sharks, Bunnies. Damn. Man, if Sharks lose this. Wow. Jesus, Parramatta could jump up. Back. <laughs> I don't think it'll happen, but Jesus, they could just about... This is craziness. This is a crazy year, man. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. Um, but yeah, absolutely crazy. All right, Raiders Knights. <sighs> Raiders. This is the worst call I made of the round, by the way. A minute into this game, I was like, why the hell did you tip the Raiders? Now, I've been riding. Maybe it's because I've been riding the Raiders and saying, told you so. I told you they were going to be good this year when everyone else was saying they're going to miss the eight and blah, blah, blah. And I've been sort of, you know, riding that, and like I'm smarter than you. Like oh, I knew they were going to make the eight, and they've just looked awful. And it's just, like, 
I don't know what they're thinking when they're attacking another team's try line. They just... Like, crash play's cool. Like, they do them. Like, I'm not saying don't do them. But, like, at least do something before you do them. Like, you see most crash plays, right? Dummy half will dip out, and there'll be a lot guy running. You tip it around the corner, and the guy's running an angle. So, you know, you crash over. They're just passing to a forward running straight into the lot. Like, that is not a play. That's just forwards running into forwards. Like... I mean, that's not a, like a spectacular, crazy play, but just turning the ball back on the inside against the grain, at least you've got the defence sort of wrong-footed and you can hit a seam and go through. But they, it is... A tr- like, they had something like... I can't remember the exact number, but it was something like 40 tackles inside their 20 minutes min- and didn't score. It was, it was horrendous. So uh, I'm, I'm sitting there going, you have Tomoko out on that edge. You have, like... You have Croker. You have like, what are you doing? You're just running crash plays over and over. It's complete lack of creativity from the hooker, from their plate makers. It was, it was atro- It's atrocious, and that's why again why they've been they've been getting the, because their forward pack is so good. They've been getting wins. They've been chalking up wins, but you know, like I said, their biggest wins by ten. And it's, it's just, it's just, it's, just, it's so bad. Um, Jack White, and I, again, like, so electric. He's poked his nose through a line. Love him, but... Jesus Christ. It's, there's, they're in serious trouble. Like... They're in serious trouble. Like, right now, they're scraping to the eight, get bounced first round by 40. You know what I mean? That That's sort of the team they're looking to me like right now. I think there's a better team in there, but they need to get some creativity and get some ball to their edges earlier ASAP like because it's yeah it's not good enough like it's this time of year like it's cool you got away with it all year and I thought I've been really proud of the Raiders have been really good but if you want to if you want to make it, it even just have a, a good you can be proud of your finals run you know we got bounced in the semis by the Panthers like you can live with that going down there and then you know Scraping into the eight and getting destroyed by forty—that's that's, that's a, that is a genuine letdown. I mean, you can say making the eight, yeah, ticked the box, but did you? Now onto the Knights. Oh, it just makes me so mad that they had the audacity to move Kalen Ponger out of that fullback spot and put him in at six. It's just one of the biggest blunders. I, I genuinely think they could be sitting in fifth or sixth if they didn't do that. But like they're playing like the fifth or sixth best team. They've they've been brilliant. They've been absolutely brilliant. And like I said, when I a minute into this game, I just watched Ponga sweep out the back and create a two on one like that. I was like, why the hell did you tip the Raiders? Like they can't do that. Why did? <laughs> what are you doing? Bradman Best is just on a new level. They, they're looking for him. They're running plays for him. They're hitting him short. He's running inside. He's running outside. <sighs> They've got a tall outside timber that comes in. They've got big beef. They're just they're a pretty damn good rugby league team. And I would not be surprised at all if they made the eight. I mean, like I said, there's a very good chance. I mean, like I said, Sharks and Cowboys, two tough games. They've got the Dolphins. There's a very good chance that they scrape into this eight, for real. Like, there's there's a really good chance. It's um, I mean, they've still got games to go, obviously. Can't think of what their run home is off the top of my head, but... Yeah, they, uh, good on them. Like for real, uh, I, I was, I was so mad at the Knights because they made. So, and I, and the thing, I was so vocal about this before the season kicked off, saying it's going to be the biggest mistake of their career, and it pretty much is because I genuinely think they would be in the eight if they didn't do it. But, but it's it's I'm still mad because I'm like you could have been coming fifth, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, anyway, what do you do? Let's have a look at the. Um, but yeah, Cal Pong was brilliant. I thought Cal guys, with Bradman Best is just, you know, he's just found another gear since Origin. You know, it's um, it's great. And I thought Adam Elliott's been pretty damn good too. He's just so hard to put on his back. He just runs with venom. He's great. Um, Knights, better possession. I mean, obviously want to tidy this up. They, like again, they were not perfect. They were 100% not perfect. Still with a lot of work to do. Um, but look at like all this stuff. I'm loving this. Running for two kilometres, 500 post contact, loving it. Line break six, tackle breaks 42, average set distance 49. That'll get it done. Ruck speed, look at that. Absolutely lightning quick. If this is under three and a half, you're doing good. 
Um, what else we got here? I mean, kick diffusal, solid. Tackle efficiency, boom, that'll get it done. This is top four numbers, lads. This is top four numbers. This, you know, this, you know, like this, these are, these are genuine top four numbers. This is what top four teams do. Maybe a few more line breaks, but nevertheless, nevertheless, this is, this is, these are top four numbers. These are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but these aren't. That's obviously one little, um, nick on their, on their, on the game, really. It's just, just a bunch of errors that they probably didn't need to do. And, I mean, yeah, it's great. Only four penalties given. Brilliant. You can live with that all day. So good on the old, good on the Knights. You've resurrected the season, but if you don't make the eight, I don't I don't think you can call not making the eight. It's still a, not a failure of a season, but you're disappointed. You're disappointed. Every team's goal, first goal is to make the finals. Except for maybe Penrith and Melbourne. Theirs is to win the minor premiership, I think. But... Um, yeah, first goals make the finals, and they're they're on their way. They're on their way. Oh, I'm not going to talk very long about this game. <laughs> this was probably the one game of the week I was like ugh, struggling not to look at my phone. I was a bit bored, but what do you do, man? Uh, what do you do? Um, Zach Lomax has to be fullback. I, I genuinely think he's a Got Tyrell Sloan going back, or playing on the wing, or going back to grade. It's not going to do his career any harm. It'd probably do it good, um, damaging his confidence now, and just him getting hate and blah blah blah. Zach Lomax, I think give him a genuine. What have we got? Four or five rounds left. Give him a proper four or five games in that spot, and just have a good look because I think you'll, I think you'll find something. Uh, Benny Hunt doing what he does, kicking the ball dead three times and kicking forty. No, nah, did he kick a forty twenty? You know, yeah, doing his thing. Uh, Cherry Evans, damn great. Schuster, I mean, I, I felt like he was running at the line a bit more. But Jesus Christ, it's nice to see Saab in some, in some daylight. He was uh, bloody beautiful. I mean, look at this. Look at this possession. Look, look how much more time in possession. <laughs> this, these, this is absurd. Look how much more they completed. And, uh, and again, look at the meters they ran. And I'm sorry. And to pin this on someone, but if your forwards are putting up these meters and you're tackling and you're doing this, unfortunately, is your halves' fault. I'm sorry, it is, and this is 100% your halves' fault. I mean, everyone says Ben Hunt's trying his ass off, and he, you know no one else is helping. Well, this this right here, this was this is these are brilliant numbers, and um, average set. Is, you you got to do something with that. You can't you can't complete at eighty one when your opposition's completed at sixty eight. Have your forwards dominate their forwards, compl way more post contact, average set distance higher. You're winning the ruck and you can't do anything with it. That's one hundred. Just just looking at it, that is your halfback's fault. It, it just is. Um, like I said, everyone. You know, I, I, I sit there and watch Ben Hunt, and I think he's a really, really good rugby league player, but I've never quite got there. Well, everyone on Dragon sucks, and it, like I watched their games last year. There was ga he had stinkers last year. He, he really did, and he had way more good games than he had bad, but he has stinkers sometimes, and um, yeah, I, I was not feeling what he was doing. Like, this is, I'd, I'd be very disappointed if I was a forward and I dominated the middle like this, and my halves couldn't do anything with it, and you go down and lose, but... Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? That's the way it goes sometimes. That's the way it goes. Uh, what else we got here? Tackle efficiency as well. Like these are brilliant numbers from the from the Dragons. This this is this is what the, you get paid a million dollars. Your 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 team does this for you. You you got to ice the game. You got to ice the game. But what do you do? They didn't. They didn't. And I'm not pinning it all on Ben Hunt. I'm just saying that's. I'd be pissed. <laughs> If you looked at this scoreline, you'd say, well, Sharkies, you know, they, yeah, there's some serious problems there still. I thought they aimed up for real. I thought they really did step up. I thought there was a different intensity. I thought their line speed was great. I thought they did a lot of good things. I thought, I thought they fixed a lot of stuff. And they get a complete shutout. This Penrith team is for real. They had a sin bin. They had a sin bin. And I could not notice a difference in their defensive line. They'd... 
and and this is a, again I'll get to them just comparing them again to the Broncos like we're comparing contenders here. Eighty minutes of brilliance and just eighty minutes are just relentless. And then you know what I mean Broncos, sixty minutes. You know those little lapses. It's still great. Still the far better team. Still still probably the second best team in the comp. Don't shoot me. But you you get what I'm saying. This was just an absolute masterclass. Um, just. 18-0 at half time, just another 10 points in the second half. Shut them out. Defend hard. It's just, and, this, yeah, this team is just, yeah, it's just it's just nuts. And Cleary, see, this is the thing. Bron- so, Cowboy, to me, I think Cowboys, Broncos, and, and um, Penrith have probably been playing the best over the past, you know, few months, a couple months. The difference between, say, Broncos... Cowboys and then the Penrith I'd call, put them in a separate group is Penrith don't try and score tries like all the time like if we, we'll talk we're going to talk about the Cowboys in a minute but if you watch Drinky every time he gets the ball he's looking for a line break he's looking for it I mean it's not like Penrith aren't but they're just even a, the attacking kicks right just every this is every team in the comp say they get um, you have the ball just over halfway most teams will put a high bomb up so there's a contest, see something happen. Penrith just drill it to a corner. I mean, Cleary wasn't perfect. 240-20s, damn close to perfect. Nearly kicked a 50-metre field goal. He did kick a couple dead. No, he kicked one dead and one dribbled out when he wanted it to pull up. But so damn close to perfect. And it's just, it's, it's that, they're just like, there's no, they, they don't try and score tries. Like, I feel like most NRL teams are like, well, if we have even a chance to score a try, like, just do it. And, you know, you never know, like, we might get a try. <coughs> Penrith don't. They just like, they're like, we'll get, we'll get tries, we'll get enough tries, but let's just, let's just keep them down there. Let's just keep them down there. They'll bash you, kick the ball up to Edwards. Edwards gets it, runs up to the halfway. They start the set again, bang, bang, bang. All right, nothing on, cool, boom, kick it down there again, pin them down, make them work. If all their forwards are turning around again, Go to work, go to work, and then you look up and it's twenty eight nil, and you're like, "What the hell? I've just, I've just been tackling all game." McInnes made eighty three tackles, like, like these tackle numbers are just off the charts. What they just, they just, like, I, I honestly didn't think like they were that bad. Oh, this is this stupid thing. Oh, this yeah, that's right, this. Um, yeah, I honestly didn't think they were this bad, but it was just, yeah, it's just, they're just damn good, man. No, I just, 83 tackles, two misses. It's just, they just made them tackle until they, and then McInnes made like three errors at the end of the game. And people said, oh, I didn't hope people say, yeah, they just suck. Bro, they've been tackling their rings off all game. McInnes, <coughs> McInnes dropped those balls because he's exhausted, man. He's, he's exhausted from what he's had to do against his team. It's bananas, man. It's absolutely bananas. And like all, most of the errors, these errors, I mean, I'm sure, yeah, there you go, 66%. A lot of these errors are in the second half. I don't have first and second half stats, but I damn near say most of those errors have been in the second half. And a lot of them weren't forced passes or anything. They were dead set sitters and that they just put down. It's like absolutely exhausted. Um, you know, let's have a look at these stats anyway. Um, well, actually, I want to give this dude a wrap too. Daruva's done this twice in a row now, and this is like a bit of an unspoken thing. I don't think this guy's quite getting the raps he deserves, but all right, so he did it last week against, who were they playing? Whoever they were playing, but he did it in this game too. All right, so Sharks run the ball, fifth tackle, go to Daruva's side. Daruva shuts it down, right? Boom, tackle, tackles the winger, shuts him down, so it's a turnover. It's sort of a bit of an unspoken rule. If you shut that down, you get to play the ball and don't have to carry that first, take that first carry, right? Because that first carry sucks. I mean, you're on your own... They're on 10 metres out. They're going to try and force a mistake. That first carry sucks. If you shut down a play, there's sort of a bit of an unspoken thing where you get to play the ball and someone else can take that tough carry because you just shut down a try. Like he did it last week. He did it this week. He just made that tackle, jumped up, ran back into the end goal and goes, right, let's go. And, like that's, that's insane. Like I just see little stuff like that, man. I'm like, he did he does not have to take that carry. Like, everyone on earth knows he does not have to take that carry. He just, he just jumped up. You, you watch players, like, now you've heard me say this, watch players now that when they shut something down on the edge, they're grabbing the ball, looking to throw it so they can, you know, play it. You know what I mean? Don't have to take that shitty carry. Drew's like, no, I'll take that carry. Let's go. He's the littlest dude on the field, man. 
monster, monster. Um, I don't, I think he's rookie. If he's, he's got to be damn close to rookie of the year. He's mine. Him and Preston, brilliant. Um, so I'm pretty interested to look at these stats. Uh, 1900 meters. I mean, they're doing their thing. Um, and I, I tell you what, Nathan Ivan Cleary is just—he's just killing his strategies each week. Like they cha they're changing to each team, and just <coughs> keeping Moses on the bench, starting Lindsay. He just—he just constantly had punch through the middle. There was no lull without um without Spencer Lino. He's just—he's just on another level. He's just Ivan Cleary is. Uh, to me, he's, he's hands down the best uh, best coach in the game at the moment of the modern era of the last say five years. I, I just I don't see anyone close. Um, look at this time in possession: thirty three minutes to twenty three, nineteen hundred meters to thirteen hundred, um, six hundred twenty seven post contact, uh, only four line breaks. Again, they're not trying to break your line every two seconds. Tackle breaks though, forty four. Jesus Christ. Like I said, Penrith did a pretty good job matching them set for set, average set distance, um, identical ruck speed. Um, I thought the Sharks actually did plenty right, especially in the first half. Um, but yeah, just a couple more missed tackles. Um, and obviously, then the errors killed them. Can't, can't make 13 errors against Penrith. You're over eight errors against Penrith, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Um, yeah, look, I could just sit here and talk about how good Penrith are all day, but let's move on. <laughs> Doggies getting the dub. I thought they were a bit lucky here. I thought there was poor calls on both sides, but I definitely thought that last pass was not that last pass was the Ford. Um, and then obviously Osako had a goal to tie it up and missed him. But look, man, they got the dub, and they were a very good rugby league team. Uh, sorry, they played like a very good rugby league team. I, I just, I mean, let's have a look at these stats for a sec. I mean, completion's terrible, but um, actually they were awful for a lot of it, with the, especially with the ball in the hand. But I like their effort area stuff. I mean, they didn't. They actually won the line breaks. I mean, you know, there, there was, you know, they didn't get blown off the park through the middle. Relatively matched them. Um, you know, the tackle breaks is pretty horrendous. But yeah, it was. Yeah, these like these numbers the, the a few weeks ago were so bad. Like, and I'm I'm glad they tidied them up. And look, they actually won the ruck, man. So, like I said, I, I'm just I'm trying to find positives in teams. I'm not trying to bag every team and say how crap they are. I mean. I'll tell someone they're rubbish if they're rubbish, but and the someone put a rubbish effort in. But I, I, I thought they tried, and that, that's all I can ask from them. Um, I really interested to see how they injected kick air. Um, I thought they used him poorly sometimes and good sometimes. The, the his actual try, perfect bit of sub. That's how you run a crash play, Canberra. Watch that. Um, great little crash play there. Found the seam. Boom. There you go. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it was it was it was an entertaining game for a bit of a like a nothing game if that makes sense. Um, let's go through him. What else we got? What else we got? Um, tackle efficiency obviously still pretty damn poor, but I thought they thought their scramble defense was a bit better. Missed tackles forty nine, not good enough. Um, so yeah, still a lot of work to do. They're still falling off tackles. Reed Marnie still missed so many tackles, man. Uh, so it's still still plenty of work to do for the doggies, but like I said, I'm trying to be positive towards the doggies. They've they've been caned all year, uh, but yeah, let's move on to the big one. Now, this was I said it in the last two weeks, and people were saying I was being a hater. I didn't think Cowboys were that great the last two weeks, Eagles and Parramatta. Um, and I was just sitting there going, oh, look, they burned both games by one try. I was like, yeah, look, they're, they're on a hot street. They're looking great. Maybe there's a little lull. And I actually mentioned a bit of fatigue. Like, they've had to spend a lot of energy just to get to where they are. And I, was, I said at the end of the Parramatta game, people was, <laughs> the excuses, Cowboys fans, I love you, but Jesus Christ, the excuses. Oh, they only look tight against Parramatta because they're offloading loss. That's rugby league, man. The teams are going to offload sometimes. <laughs> the, oh, man, the excuses were killing me. Yeah, but there was a sin bin. Every team gets a sin bin, bro. It happens. I was like, come on, man. Guys, stop it with the excuses, man. You look tired. You got gas. It's all good. Teams get tired. Doesn't mean you're a crappy footy team. It just it just happened. You you were tired. It happened. And um, I think they've expelled a lot of energy to get into this eight spot. They've got the Broncos next week. Like I said, this is the scary part for the Cowboys because they dropped this game against the Broncos. They're going to get the break. The break could not come at a more perfect time for the Cowboys, in my opinion. 
Um, I, I was thinking they were going to win this game, probably lose the Broncos game, and then have a buy, refresh, replenish, and then make a real nice finals run home. Now they've lost this this game. This this game becomes a lot more important because you don't want to go on a two zero skid, and then you know watch all these teams jump here. You know you can't make you can't on a buy as positive as it is in a buy you can't improve your for and against. So they'll be sitting there on forty eight points for and against. Whereas these teams can well Knights can improve theirs, Parramatta can improve theirs, Sharky. You know like some of these teams could possibly improve theirs. So a buy is great, but it's not. It's you know there's. You can't improve your for and against in it. Um, so yeah, it's it's like I said, it's not panic stations. I was one like people saying, uh, had Cowboys fans saying that they're not going to drop a game for the rest of the year, and I was just like, I'm not people are thinking I'm a hater. I'm like, I'm not hating. I just think they're going to lose a game between now and the finals. Like maybe two. Like God forbid, maybe three. And um, I mean, they got Penrith to go. They got Broncos to go. They got Sharks to go. They got so three pretty tough teams. Um, you know, so they could definitely drop a game or two, but I mean, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. 13 games might scrape into the eight, 14 should get you in. So, four full games of rugby league left. You know, you're going to need to win two at minimum, possibly three. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I, I haven't quite been on, on riding that camp Cowboys bandwagon like I have with, you know, the Waz, you know, Penrith, you know, these guys. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of. I've got one foot on the bandwagon, but I wasn't quite feeling it, and I was expecting a game like this to sort of go down. Um, but yeah, like this, this loss could just be an absolute blip, and they could literally go on the rest of the season without dropping a game because they've genuinely looked like a top four team. Or this could be a danger signs. We just don't know till next week. Next week's going to be a big tell for for the Cowboys. This is a monstrously big game, and um, if they win it, I dare say they're probably in the finals. And if they lose it, they still could make the finals, but it's it's going to be it's going to make it a lot harder. Um, it's going to make it a lot harder. Um, let's have a look at these stats. I haven't looked at these yet, um, but yeah, look, man, I thought the Titans like they were okay, but I mean, I thought those poor calls on both sides. We can't blame that. Um, Val Holmes definitely made contact with the head, so you, you got to do that. That's the way it goes. And I didn't think, I didn't think. Titans were brilliant. Um, again, I just I don't know if it was fatigue in the Cowboys. I, I just I think the Cowboys need a week off for real. I just I think that they are good. I think they are very good, but I just I think they just need a genuine refresh. Because I said they looked oh, I, was, I thought they looked a little tired against Manly. Then against Para, they one hundred percent faded. Like they were awful in the last twenty minutes. Brilliant for 40, 45, okay for about twenty, and then terrible for the last end end of it. And then this game, it just it just seemed a little flat. Not bad, just a little flat. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Only time will tell um, whether they're faded or whether they're just you know just a little blip. We we really don't know yet. But like I said, we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot from the Cowboys next week. We're gonna learn a lot. Um, I, Tanner Boyd. I mean, look, he's not the best half in the game, but he's on 120k a year. That's insane. That's such a good price for him. He's been damn for that price. He's He's damn near Nathan Cleary. <laughs> like, he's been pretty damn good. Um, yeah, who else? Yeah, I just thought it was... Let's have a look at these team stats. I mean, look, the Cowboys... Like, Vellame, I mean, happened to his try score was great. Scotty Drinkwater didn't quite get the opportunities he normally would, but I still thought he looked dangerous every time he touched the ball. Tua Lungi was good. Val Holmes, you know, he's, he's got the sin bin. He, he looked sharp, but he, again, it wasn't a bad performance either. This is the thing. They just this is this is why I'm a little worried about them. Are they hitting the wall a little bit? No one played poorly. It was just it didn't have that that spark that they've had. You know, it didn't have that that spark because um, I thought there was good performances everywhere. Like, I didn't think anyone was horrible. I mean, there was. Every, everyone just seemed, and that's why I said as a week ago, everyone just seemed just a notch down. Not not terrible, just a notch down. Except for this dude. God damn, that dude tries his ass off every damn game. Now I'm interested in these stats because I didn't, haven't checked these ones yet. All right, um, Titans, a bit more possession. Um, 82%. Yeah, look at that. Wow, look at all those extra sets. There was plenty of penalties in Titans' favour. That's for damn sure. But, you know, it's, it's your job to... Not give penalties. I mean, that's I've, one thing I've given Broncos a ton of raps with. Just not giving dumb penalties this year, man. Broncos have won plenty of games this year. Just simply, 
I didn't think they were substantially better than the team they beat. I mean, they just didn't give penalties. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, look, I mean, this this is pretty crazy stat. I mean, they didn't have Tino on the team and they substantially outran the Cowboys. That's a little bit of a concern. Post-contact, pretty even, nothing crazy. One line break. You have Val Holmes and Scott Drinkwater in your team and you have one line break. That is, and Dearden, not to mention Dearden and Jesus Christ. Now, this, and this is why we're not sure and we'll find out. Was this Cowboys being flat or was the Titans defense good? Now, this is, Titans don't have good defense. <laughs> Maybe they just had a brilliant game on defense. I don't know. And that's why I said we're probably going to have to wait till next week to see. But to me, if it, just look at like, Titans do, like, the stats don't lie. They have terrible defense. So for the Cowboys to only have one line break in a game of footy, that's um, that's that just tells that leans me towards maybe they're a little flat, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Uh, tackle breaks forty seven to twenty six. Like I said, it felt like they're fighting a little bit more. Um, average set distance bang on even. I mean ruck speed. I mean Cowboys a little bit quicker. And if you have got Reuben Cotter on your team, you're getting quick play the ball, son. Um, what else we got here? What else we got? Nothing too crazy. Uh, Cowboys definitely you know a little off for them as far as tackle efficiency goes. Uh, missed tackles way too high for the Cowboys, and uh, like Titans, that's that's solid, man. Absolutely solid. I mean, and like I said, <coughs> they got they let them in the game a few times. Cowboys was there to be won. It was there to be won, but I'm taking this loss with, for the Cowboys with a little grain of salt. But at the same time, it might be a large handful of salt. We really don't know. And um, like if they come out against <coughs> if they come out against um, the Broncos. And they're flat and Broncos put on 30 on them. They're in big trouble. Big, big trouble. All right, that's it for the game's goals. We'll have a little look at it next week. All right, so Thursday night, we have the Roosters versus Seagulls. Seagulls need to win that to stay in contention. Titans, ooh, I mean, you would have said Wiles would get this easy, but Jesus Christ, um, no easy beats. God damn, I'm not too sure if Tino's back for this one. I can't remember. Um, but we'll obviously, we'll do a preview and we'll see this. And then Friday night, check this out. Oh, oh, so this is for oh yeah, of course Warriors Friday night versus Titans in New Zealand out in a uh, um, little Gold Coast Panthers versus Storm just cannot wait for that and then oh Saturday it's a day game up in Townsville oh oh god damn god damn that's gonna be good I cannot wait for that um, then we have Dolphins Knights um, Knights need to get that one then we have Bunny Sharks big game for both teams big game for both teams. And then Eels need a dub against the Dragons. Really need one. And then Raiders really need to get the season back on track. And that that's this is, I'm telling you, this is a big danger game for the Raiders, man. Like I said, I, I've been seeing signs from the, the Cowboys are not far off. So, And then uh, Bulldogs with a much-deserved break. I'm out, guys. I'm done. I'm tired. It's midnight. I'm going to bed. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>